There's a new version of Claude from Anthropic 3.5, and everyone's going to be talking about this. Is it actually now the best large language model out there? Can it compete with GPT-40? Well, I think on one very specific way, yes, it is blowing chat GPT out of the water. However, I'm probably still not going to use it a ton, and I'm going to tell you why you maybe shouldn't either. All right, let's dive in. This is going to be a very quick overview, but we're going to be talking about this a lot coming up. All right, so if you're new here, what's going on? My name's Jordan Wilson, and I'm the host of Everyday AI. So we're a daily live stream podcast, free daily newsletter, helping everyday people learn and leverage generative AI. So if that's you, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, let me know in the comments what you want to see, but make sure to go to youreverydayai.com and sign up for the free daily newsletter. All right. So Anthropic literally just dropped hot off the presses. I was actually in a meeting. Otherwise, this would have been out sooner. Uh, but uh, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. So if you are a little new to Claude, let me just quickly catch you up. It is a very powerful and capable model. However, I still tell a lot of people, eh, it's really not worth using. Mainly one of the reasons, main, mainly one of the main reasons why, tongue twister, is it doesn't have real time access to the internet out of the box. So always keep that in mind, right? So if you're creating something, you know, for your business, know that the training data is going to be old. Right. And at least with uh, Chat GPT uh, and Gemini and Copilot, you have some, uh, you know, varying levels of internet connectivity. Always keep that in mind. However, take that out of the equation. And Claude 3.5 does look like a fairly powerful model. So uh, a little bit confusing, but I'm going to try to explain it to you. So, uh, you know, when Claude 3 came out, it came out essentially in three different varieties. So you had Claude 3 Haiku. You had Claude 3 Sonnet and Claude 3 Opus. Opus was the most powerful model, but if you were using the API, it was the most expensive. Haiku was the fastest, the cheapest, and Sonnet was kind of in between. It was a nice mixture of speed and cost and power, right? Uh, so right now, uh, the 3.5 is only Sonnet. All right, so that's number one new thing. Uh, the next thing that you have to know is now the artifacts, uh, the artifacts. So let's just jump in and I'll show you what this artifacts is. And that is the one feature that I'm pretty sure I'm going to love. All right. So I literally haven't tried this yet. Yeah. People who are like, you know, watch, watch these videos and it's like, oh, so, so unpolished. Well, this is live y'all. Um, you know, I think too many people out there try to get things looking perfect. I just give it to you how it is. All right. And I'm also going to be testing a lot of the prompts that Claude did. Um, so many times I run prompts that, uh, you know, companies put out there in their marketing and then they stink and they don't even work. So I always like to fact check these companies. So this is one word for word and I am in Claude 3.5 saw it. And you'll see, uh, Opus, which was the most powerful model is now maybe just not going to get used at all. Um, and then you have this, the artifacts. So I'm going to show you that more here. Uh, actually let's just do it right now. So, uh, to enable that, you're going to click there and you go to feature preview and then you need to toggle artifacts on. So if you if you aren't greeted with this feature when you log in, that's what you need to know. Also, uh, this is very limited uh, availability for free, uh, kind of taking the GPT-4.0 route where they make uh, their most powerful model free, but then, you know, very limited and throttled to kind of give you a taste and, you know, then kind of make you upgrade. All right, so let's just go. I'm going to run this exact same prompt that they did. Can you write me a simplified neural network in Python? All right, so hopefully we'll see artifacts uh, pop up here. Uh, all right, I might have to zoom out a little bit. So I do so far love the concept of artifacts. So it essentially gives you a little preview window. So kind of like if you're building GPTs, you can build it on the left, preview it on the right. So that's what we're seeing here uh, from Claude. So pretty good. If I'm telling you the truth, I don't know a lot of Python, but I just wanted to test kind of their things. All right. So now let's do uh, this next version, uh, which I kind of liked. I'm just going to start a new chat. Let's see if this actually works. Um, so I said, can you create an eight bit style robot for me? So again, I'm file, I'm just, uh, swapping out, uh, some of the things that they actually said. So, uh, Claude did a demo of this pretty similarly. Uh, I'm just swapping things out to make it a little more like everyday AI. You know, we got our little, uh, Bobby bot logo there. So, uh, let's jump back in and we'll see if we can kind of recreate this. So, okay. It made, uh, an eight bit robot. Now I'm saying, can you create, um, some small spaceships in the same style? So again, we're putting this, putting this to the test, see if it works. All right. 
There's a spaceship. Well, give me one spaceship at least. Uh, then I said, now how about some trash cans? See how it does. All right. And again, I'm doing this live, y'all. So pretty fast, fairly accurate. All right. So now I'm going to say, can we inline these into a simple side-scrolling game in HTML5? Again, I'm just swapping out uh, what Claude did. They did it with a crab and cloud. So I'm really just changing one word and seeing if this actually works, right? Uh, ever since we saw a Gemini, the Gemini announcement from Google, we saw sometimes companies eh, might not be as truthful. So uh, we're seeing if Claude can actually get this. Okay, so, so far it looks okay. So now I'm saying, let's make it playable. Have the robot jump up and over oncoming trash cans. Can you make some styling too? I want to call this robot Bobby Bot. So again, we're doing essentially a word for word recreation, just swapping out uh, kind of one little thing in there uh, to see if we can kind of recreate what they did. So let's give it a chance. I mean, first impressions, super fast. My gosh, this is fast. Uh, very impressive. It does seem GPT-4.0 levels. Let me know if you're watching uh, in the comments, if that's kind of the vibes that you're getting. but. Pretty fast, pretty impressive. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, so um, let's see. I'm just going to ask a question. I'm going to say, how can I jump? I don't know if, if uh, Anthropic did that in their demo. Uh, okay, press the space bar. So it looks like it's it's recleaning it up. So we'll give it one more shot. Uh, I don't know if Anthropic did that in their little demo video. Uh, so let's see if it works here. So it says, press, press space bar to make Bobby Bot jump. All right. Uh, it doesn't look, maybe it was working previously. Uh, the nice thing I like is it looks like you can scroll here through the versions. Uh, so there's version one, there's version two. It says press space bar to make it jump. So that one didn't work perfectly. And I did kind of not word for word, but almost word for word, recreate what uh, Anthropic did. So I'm impressed uh, how quickly the demo didn't work uh, necessarily, but um, you know that's okay. All right, so let's just do a couple more uh, examples here. So I'm gonna just uh, do a screenshot here. Um, I'm gonna go into a, a new prompt here, and I'm going to say, I'm gonna say convert this UI design to uh, front end code. And then I'm going to take, I just screenshotted, uh, I screenshotted Claude's homepage. Let's see if I can do this. So it says, it's telling me what it's doing. It's uh, creating React code with Tailwind and CSS for styling. All right, I like that. Uh, so let's see how it does. It does recognize, it says right here, Claude UI uh, component. So Okay, interesting. So it kind of kind of got it right. So it says, you know, start chat has a little logo here, a space where you can input something, uh, three three uh, kind of blocks right there. So it actually did a fairly good job. Uh, so now I'm going to work with it iteratively. I'm going to say, uh, let's change the um, orange uh, orange to blue and put placeholder images in the uh, image blocks. I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, let's see if it does. I would be fairly impressed, um, especially if it keeps everything else exactly the same. Because what you see from generative AI, even Dolly, you know, you can do a prompt like that and then literally everything changes. When you're trying to do some like in painting with prompts, uh, it will change kind of everything. So let's see how Claude does in that. So it actually kept, so it got uh, half of it right. It did change uh, the orange to blue, so pretty impressive. And it didn't do anything um, with the placeholder images. So it says added placeholder images. It doesn't look like it actually did, but that's okay. I mean, y'all, out of the box, and this is the one, uh, the one thing that I think right now gives Anthropic Claude an immediate advantage is this, uh, this. Um, artifacts window, right? Because uh, chat GPT, you can generate code, but then you have to copy and paste it, you know, go into Replit or something else. So this is great uh, for coding. My gosh, super quick, super clean, 
Love the interface, right? Uh, sometimes I'm hard on Claude, mainly because it's not connected to the internet. And I'd say that takes away so much of the use case and the utility of a large language model and what you would actually want to use it for. But for something like data analysis, for something like coding, very fast, pretty good so far. I mean, I'm pretty impressed. This is probably, I've used a lot of different, you know, models online, offline, uh, you know, AI design tools. It's pretty good. It's actually really good. All right, let's just try maybe one more thing here. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to upload a spreadsheet. Let's see, I uh, probably should have brought this in first. So let's just go ahead. I've actually done this video before. It's just some, uh, it's just some random uh, website data that I have. So it's just a nice little data set here. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you. This is what we got here. It's just some random data from Google Search Console. So uh, we kind of saw some coding capabilities. Um, so I don't know if it's going to work better as a CSV or an XLS. So let's just go ahead now, go back into Claude. Let's just say, um, let's put that in. All right. So it looks like CSV is what works best. I had a prompt that I used previously. So first I want to see how quickly um, so again, I'm using 3.5 Sonnet, which again, it's free for very limited use case. Otherwise you're going to have to have a pay plan. So I just had a prompt. I had run this before I'd done a video on it, uh, basically just doing some, uh, advanced, uh, data analysis and thinking critically about this. So I wanted to see, first of all, how good it did. Uh, it did fairly well. It did fairly well. So, uh, that's, that, that's one thing I wanted to see if it could quickly and accurately, uh, you know, kind of go through and. Uh, crunch this data, which I think it did a great job on. Uh, so now let's try something a little more complex, see how it does. I'm saying create a simple business dashboard based on this data. So uh, let's see. I don't even know what this could look like. I mean, it's a pretty, uh, it's a lot of data. So I'm curious if it's going to be able to create a business dashboard. Okay. Very fast. Okay. That's pretty, this is pretty good. This is very good, actually. I mean, wow, wow. Okay, uh, this is extremely useful. Okay, this is impressive, Claude. Uh, three, three, five with artifacts, pretty good so far. Now I'm just saying, uh, let's uh, let's create a JS-based presentation based on this data. Again, uh, taking different elements that you know Claude itself um, kind of promoted. I always like to put those to the test. Uh, kind of using my own data and seeing how things turn out. So again, this artifacts window, I'm loving it. It allows you to uh, generate and render different things, code, uh, games. Uh, we'll see how it does with presentations. So uh, very quick run through right now. Um, so it says unsupported library or icons detected. Interesting. Uh, so let's see if it gave us an actual error message. Okay. So I don't know if this was the best uh, kind of thing to do to create a, a presentation based on just data. I'm not giving it a lot of other information, but you know what? I'm still very impressed, right? I knew not all of those things were probably going to work right out of the box, but I mean, overall, uh, you, you know, this new feature, uh, it's definitely worth paying attention to artifacts, uh, the 3.5 model, a lot to look at. We're going to be having a lot more. Let me know in the comments if what you want to see me test. Should we do a whole episode uh, on this on Everyday AI? Let me know. Thank you for watching and we'll see you back for, eh, usually it's an AI in five. Today it's an AI in 14. Thanks y'all.